Okay, for this screencast, we're going to do something called Lagrange polynomials, and I'm just going to call this function Lagrange poly. Um, this is a simple interpolation method. It's a simple curve fitting method. It's very similar to Taylor series. It has orders. They increase in magnitude, um, so on and so forth. Um, so basically, the way I'm going to set up this problem, I'm going to do Lagrange poly, and then I'm going to make a function down here called y equals f of x, and I'm going to do something sim really simple. I'm just going to say y equals uh, x squared. Uh, let's say minus 1 just for kicks. Okay, so now what we need is to plot this. So I'm going to go just from minus 1 to 1. Uh, let's say minus 4 to 4. Um, y equals f of x, done. Okay, so then I can, uh, I'm going to close all, and then I'm going to plot x comma y. I'm going to do it in blue with the large line width. I'm actually going to do black. And I hit f5 here, and I get my plot of x squared. I'm going to throw a grid on here, and here we go. Okay, so this, this plot here is just typical x squared. So now what we want to do is we want to fit this using Lagrange polynomials. So here is the Lagrange polynomial um, equation taken from the numerical methods textbook that I use in my class and you probably have a similar one. And so basically you have a linear version here and you have a quadratic version here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this guy here, this guy over here, and we're going to do the linear version first. So what you need are sampled data points, okay? So say this is the position of you know, a particle as a function of time, or perhaps it's the frequency of a body as a function of space, whatever you want. Let's assume that we know that x0 at negative 4 is, I'm just going to plug it in, I'm going to assume that I know it, I can measure it, x1 is say 0, x and then y0 is f of x1. Sorry, y1 is f of x1. So for the linear version, you only need two data points. For the um, quadratic version, you need three points. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and preemptively put uh, four here. But I'm only going to I'm going to do this twice. So let's first do the linear version. Okay. Now, if you notice here, there are two terms here. You've got the first term and the linear term, and then the second term. So in order to highlight what this Lagrange polynomials are doing, I'm going to just uh, make a vector called L1, and I'm going to put in here x minus x1 divided by x0 minus x1. And we know that x0 and x1 will never be 0 because those are sample data points. Those are fixed values. And I'm going to multiply this by f of x0, which in this case is just y0. Okay. And then L2 is, again, I'm just pulling this off from here, is x minus x0 divided by x1 minus x0. And so that's just, you know, the negative of that times. And this is now y1, all right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a, a hold on here on line 14. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot x comma L1. And I'm going to plot this one in red. And I'm going to plot L2 in blue. And I'm going to go ahead and hit F5 here. And so let's take a look at what's happening here, okay? If we zoom in to here, here's my area of interest here. Remember, the red one is L1. And so what you notice is there are two sample data points here. There's a sample data point here at x equals 0, and there's a sample data point here at x equals negative 4. And so this first term, which is in red, L1, and I'm going to go ahead and throw a legend in here so it makes a little bit more, uh, more sense. Here we go. So now we've got L1 and L2. Oop. This is the truth graph, actually. There we go. Okay, so here we, here we are. So if you look at these terms here, you'll notice that what happens when x is equal to x1? Well, this first term goes to 0. So that means that when x is equal to x1, so in this case 0, when x is equal to x1, 
So x0 is, is 1. Sorry, I'm, I'm losing my mouth here. So x1 is 0. So the, the first, the, the, the x1 data point is x equals 0. And when I plug it into this equation here, I get 0. So that's why this red line crosses here. Now, when x is equal to x0, which is negative 4, you get x0 minus x1 divided by x0 minus x1. So this whole term goes to 1, and you just get f of x0, which is f of negative 4. So basically, your first Lagrange polynomial for the linear case is just the coordinate evaluated at the sample point, and then you put a 0 coordinate here at the other sample point, and then you just draw a line connecting the two. And so what you'll notice is you do the exact same thing for the blue line. So at negative four, instead, you put a coordinate at zero, and then you grab the coordinate at zero and then connect the dots. And so this is weird because then you say like, okay, what does that mean with these two graphs, right? Well, if I take my Lagrange, I'm gonna call it L linear, which is L1 plus L2, I'm going to come down here, I'm going to plot x comma l linear, and I'm going to plot this in, say, green, line width of 2. I'm going to put my legend here and say this is linear, and I run this, here is my linear polynomial now. And this might not seem that accurate, and it's not because this is a quadratic. What we can do to make this more accurate is we can say, okay, well, let's put my let's make my sample points closer together. So I'm going to change x1 to negative 2. If I hit play there, now if you come in here, I'm going to maximize this. If I look at this green graph, look at the difference between the green graph and the red graph. So the green graph goes through both of the sample data points and it approximates this curve pretty well. So that's the benefit of the Lagrange polynomial is that it goes through the two sample data points. And the only difference is, is in this case is that there's a little bit of error here. So then this is obviously where the quadratic polynomial comes in. So if we instead now, I'm gonna comment this out, and I'll also comment out this in the legend, I'm gonna do the quadratic version. So now we have L1 is, and again, I'm just going to copy from here, we've got x minus x1 times, and I have to do a dot times because these are vectors, x minus x2, and then these are scalars, so I'm just going to divide by x0 minus x1 times x0 minus x2 times f of x0. L2 is x minus x0 dot times x minus x2 divided by x1 minus x0 times x1 minus x2 times f of x1. L3, and I know this is tedious, x minus x0 dot times x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x0 times x2 minus x1 times f of x2. And if all else, if we do this right, plot x comma l3 in green, and I'm going to do truth l1, l2, we should get three quadratic curves. And so there's a really easy way to check this, okay? Just like the linear curve, so the black is truth, and we've sampled data points. So let's change my middle sample data point to zero. Okay, so that, so that actually changes my curves quite a bit, and I don't really like how symmetrical that is, so I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna go back to negative two. I, li I like that a lot better. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at negative four. So if we look at our sample data point at negative four, notice that the blue curve and the green curve both intersect at zero. But the red curve intersects at 15, because that's where uh, y squared, x squared minus one uh, is, is sampled at. Now if I go to my next sampled point at negative 2, notice that the red curve and the green curve are at 0, but the blue curve intersects the black line. And then finally, if I go back over here to x equals 4, now the red curve and the blue curve are at 0, but the green curve intersects with the black line. So then, this is where the cool stuff happens. I'm going to do L 
quad, and I'm going to do this in, let's say, magenta dashes. I'm going to do a line width of 4, and I'm going to say L quad equals L1 plus L2 plus L3. I hit a 5, and what you notice is, is that the because the black line is quadratic, these three curves plotted in added together simultaneously gives me my perfect curve. So then what you say is, okay, well, what happens if you use a quadratic Lagrange polynomial on a non-quadratic? Well, that's a great question. So let's do, say, you know, I'm just making this up on the fly. Let's do something like this. Okay, now we're actually getting somewhere interesting, right? Now we have a situation and it looks like we have a uh, small error here. So let me pause it and, and see what happened. Okay, so it turns out there is actually no error here. Okay, so let's look at our two curves here. So at negative four, the red curve intersects the black line. Great. And our green and blue curves are zero. Our magenta curve, which is a summation of all three, and let me go, let me go back to our legend here, L3 and uh, L quad. So then our magenta curve intersects with the black line as well. At our second sampled point of negative two, we've got the red and green curves intersecting at zero. The blue curve and the magenta curves both intersect the black line. And then finally, at x equals four, we've got the red curve and the blue curve are zero, but the green curve and the magenta curve intersect at four. So what we need to do in order to capture this better is to change our sampled point. So if I change my sampled point to say 0, 2, and 4, let's try that. I'm going to change my sampled points to 0, 2, and 4. Now let's see if we get something a little bit better. So uh, the scaling on this is pretty horrible. But basically I've got my sample data points here. So the magenta and red curves intersect at 0. Green and blue are 0 here. At 2, I've got my blue and magenta curves intersecting the black line, and then the green and red curves are 0. I also have, there's, it looks like there's a root very close to 2, so this is a little hard to see. And then finally, the blue and red curves are 0 at 4, and the magenta and green curves are intersecting the line. And so if we look at the difference between the uh, magenta curve and the um, black line, we see that they're fairly close together. So, you know, Lagrange polynomials have shortcomings just like all of these other methods, uh, interpolation, curve fitting, and, and Taylor series. You, if your sample data points are far apart, you're not going to converge very well. Okay, good luck.